When you get right down to it, the kind of person you are is what matters most when it comes to success in selling. Being honest, dependable, hardworking, and trustworthy. High ethical standards may not necessarily guarantee you a successful sales career, but it's almost impossible to achieve those results over the long term if you lack those ethical qualities. In this unit, we'll take a close look at how ethics influence the selling process. We'll deal with how ethical decisions influence relationships, factors that influence character development, the importance of sales ethical codes of conduct, how to develop a personal code of ethics, and ethical and legal issues in international business. The most important qualities any of us have are our character and integrity. And these qualities have an immense effect on influencing our relationships in personal selling. There's nothing that can destroy a relationship and cooperation faster than one who behaves in an unethical manner. How can you trust someone after that? So let's take a look at character development. Things have become very competitive and challenging in the past 10 years or so. Lean and mean, innovative, and the like have become watchwords for the drive for profit and increased earnings. It became more common that companies crossed ethical lines by engaging in dishonest practices. The Enron scandal was the big domino of the early 2000s, although problems did manifest themselves throughout the entire corporate structure. The text also points to Lehman Brothers, a corporation with a culture of risk-taking, personal ambition, and profits and earnings growth at any cost. The text also points out a number of characteristics that have eroded ethical behavior and ultimately undermined trust in large corporations over the years. These include the idea that we're only in it for ourselves. Corporations exist to maximize shareholder value, and companies need to be lean and mean. Now, these are all true and necessary to an extent. You have to think of your shareholder, of course, and you have to think of your own value and why corporations are in business, and even the fact that sometimes downsizing and layoffs are necessary. But those cannot be the guiding principles. If they are, you will foster a climate of lying, cheating, maybe theft, refusal to work as a team, and create a distrust and resentment from the employees and the customers alike. Now, if there's an upside, it's that business and American society, for that matter, have placed a higher value than ever on fair and honest behavior. And this attitude is being passed along to sales staffs as well as entire company workforces. Firms are accepting codes of conduct, and those demands for value, ethics, and principles are being passed along to salespeople. And our colleges and universities are also adding ethics classes to their business administration programs. There are a number of factors that influence the behavior of salespeople. The idea of taking all the time you need to build a strong client-customer base for the future is a good way to approach business. But there's also a reality that you do have to get paid and to eat, and to do that, you have to sell, and the sooner you start, the better. With the short-term as well as the long-term realities, there can be a temptation to do something unethical in order to get that quick sale whether it's making exaggerated claims, giving gifts, or saying whatever it takes, there are lots of opportunities to make the unethical choice. The good news is that there are rules in place, sometimes unwritten, that we can reference to keep ourselves honest. We have a top management acting as a proper role model to set the organizational's moral tone and provide leadership. Companies can adopt core values and reward integrity and honesty. To take this a step further, it has to be recognized that not all employees have a well-entrenched sense of just what is ethical conduct. So to deal with this, many companies establish ethics policies. Many times these policies do cover topics such as sharing confidential information, reciprocity, bribery, gift-giving, entertainment, and defamation. A salesperson can occasionally become aware of a customer's confidential information, and then there's always the temptation to share that information with others to the detriment of the original customer. What the salesperson learns and tells may be useful at the moment, but can result in the salesperson ultimately losing respect, trust, and even future business. Reciprocity is another tricky area facing salespeople. Reciprocity is the mutual exchange of benefits. Now say, for instance, you buy my product, then I'll buy yours. Now, this may be okay much of the time, but when the arrangement becomes a type of blackmail or forcing someone to buy out of obligation, there's a problem. 
and the customer who does buy out of obligation may not get the same level of service or future consideration as another newer customer who is not tied to buying anything from the seller. Bribery is another area that almost always is illegal on the face, but sometimes it's still practiced in other forms nonetheless. A well understood and an open company policy can help avert a salesperson from taking a bribe. In international trade, it's also possible to violate the U.S. Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Gift giving can fall into a gray area of ethical behavior. It's common for customers to have a no gifts policy, or at least no gifts of any real value. Generally, to avoid any problems with bribery, it's good to observe these guidelines. No gifts before doing business. Do not give an impression that you are buying a customer's business with a gift. Keep gift giving a no-strings-attached goodwill gesture. And finally, you need to know your company's policies and that giving a gift doesn't violate them. A good rule of thumb is that giving a gift feels wrong, don't do it. Entertainment can fall into the same arena for potential bribery, or at least the appearance of inappropriateness. Providing entertainment to move along a business deal isn't wrong in all cases, and the same general cautions as we've already discussed are good guidelines here. Sometimes a business or a salesperson will compare qualities of a competing product and end up defaming the competitor. It's illegal if the claims are false, misleading, or liable a business's reputation. The wrong party does have the right to sue, so be careful. Examples of business defamation include both oral and written statements that can be taken as damaging a business's reputation or the reputation of an individual with the wronged company. This can also include product disparagement when comparisons of the products are false or distorted claims are being made. Use of the Internet can also create some problems for both the individual and even the person's company. You don't have to go far to find signs of internet abuse, and it's important to remember that the company does own all the material on its own email system. And then there are those cases when individuals create their own websites to do business. Now the problem here can be that this website is part of an extranet, and it's a problem for business because extranets operate outside a company's control. How much control can a company have over its own people who run their own extranets? Interesting question. An extension of the company top management serving as the primary role model in that sales managers also take on the responsibility in leading the sales staff. The sales manager is viewed as the spokesperson for top management and can affect the sales staff's behavior on how he or she handled an ethical situation. Another line of ethical defense is the salesperson's own personal values. There are also laws and contracts which bind us to act ethically. Remember, though, that just because an action may be legal, it may not be right. To avoid or at least minimize the chance that ethics issues will come back to trouble you, well, many are starting to take it upon themselves to find ways to act in an above-board manner, even if no written code exists. Here are some principles that the text stresses. Personal selling is viewed as an exchange of value. Relationships come first, tasks second. Be honest with yourself and others. It all comes down to trust where we can all believe in the concepts of integrity, ability, and the character of the person or the company. Finally, the international marketplace can create some unethical problems. What may be perfectly acceptable in one foreign country may be unethical here. For example, bribes and kickbacks are simply the way business is done in some other parts of the world. But when cultures clash and an illegal demand for bribes, kickbacks, and other special interest fees or treatment arise, there can be a block to business. For example, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act prohibits American companies from using bribes or other special treatment to influence foreign decision makers. The text points out American firms may be at a competitive disadvantage against other nations in abiding by a no-bribes or a no-gifts policy. Then again, though, it's also pointed out that the International Business Institute sees American companies as the role models for the rest of the world because of overall high ethical standards.